almost done looking at some basic equipment. Um, let's keep it moving. But just to let you know, there's even more equipment I'm not going to get to in this video. But as as we come across some other pieces of equipment in laboratories, I will uh, teach you about them. Okay. All right. What we are up to are these guys. They are called volumetric flasks. So take a wild guess why they're called volumetric. Metric means to measure, and the amount of space something takes up is volume. So these are flasks that, actu that accurately measure a certain volume. I'll bring one close to the video so you can see it. These only have one marking on them. Here. There's only one line. These are pretty expensive. They're made to measure exactly a very accurate amount of volume of a liquid. This says 250 milliliters plus or minus, meaning the error is only 0.24 milliliters at room temperature. It says at 20 degrees Celsius. I'm not so sure if you can see that there. Okay. 250 milliliters plus or minus 0.24 milliliters at 20 degrees Celsius. I don't know if that's even in focus. Sorry if it's not. But what you can see is that there is only one line. So just like with a graduated cylinder, when you get water in there, you have to read from the bottom of that curve. So what you would do is you use these to make a mixture. So what you do with a, well, really the smartest way to do it is use a funnel, which is one of the things we're coming up with, or coming up to really. So you add some water. Then let's say you have a chemical, maybe a salt, solid. What you do is you pour that through the funnel, then pour more water through the funnel. And once you know that you have the right amount of chemical that you want to dissolve, what I do is I carefully, see how I'm getting pretty filled up there? Once I get near to the end, I like to take a pipette, which we usually call an eyedropper, but it's a pipette. And what you do is you, maybe I'll add a tad more. You know what? I bet I'm going to mess this up. Let's see. Be careful here. Because if you go past that line, you messed up. So what you want to do is really carefully get close to the line. All right. Way too close. All right, then what you do is you finish off by adding carefully like this. All right, and the same goes for the small one over there. Oh, so now got to watch for that. Here, I'll show you. I don't know if you can see it. The water makes this curve. So I want to look at the bottom of the curve. Boom. Done. Okay? So that should be basically almost exactly 250 milliliters. And here's what you always do. Oops. A little bit of a safety thing here. To shake this, what you always do is grab the neck and the bottom, put your thumb over the cap, always point stuff not at your face. I usually point it like behind me and go like this. All right, don't go like this because this can explode off. You never know what's going, going to happen. Here you go. So that's how you use a volumetric flask. Uh, so again, volumetric flasks are for making very accurate volumes of a mixture, okay? There's only one line, because they're made very uh, precisely. These are much more expensive 
than a beaker or a flask. Okay. Um, test tubes. This is easy. Test tubes are probably the cheapest thing you got in the lab. Test tubes. And the thing you set them in is called a rack. So this is pretty easy. Test tubes. It's a tube. You put chemicals in there. You test them. Seriously, test tubes are basically for um, watching chemical reactions and heating substances. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of a safety thing. So, all right, test tubes. Don't ever point the mouth at you or anyone else because stuff could get overly hot and fly out. So the way you use a test tube is you point the mouth somewhere away from you, like to the side there, and you don't keep it in one spot because uh, you might get something to boil too rapidly. By the way, you notice how I'm using the test tube tongs? So this flame is super hot. Oops. You hear that? See? Already getting some boiling. So what you do is you kind of gently move the test tube around like that. Don't just sit there with it in one spot. See? Things boil very quickly in there. And if you have this pointed at your face, stuff can fly out and burn the crap out of you. So you always go like this, move it around, point it away from you. Move it around, keep it pointed away from your face. I'm already seeing some water and steam hop, like about to hop out. Oh, look, see? There was already, I'll show you. There's stuff flying out already. All right, and even if it's just hot water, doesn't matter if it's not an acid, hot water can seriously injure you. Uh, by the way, the racks are made of wood, so you can basically put a hot test tube in there and not gonna cause any damage. So there you go. So test tubes are for watching chemical reactions and heating and maybe sometimes cooling things off and watching what happens to the substance. That's it. So mixing chemicals and watching reactions and heating things. Okay. Not measuring or anything. Uh, this is really easy. And honestly, this will be the last thing we look at for today. So we already know flasks. Okay. Um, you've seen me use them a few times. And again, it's just like something at home. It's just like you would use uh, a funnel in the kitchen. It's so you don't go to pour something and then it all comes out of the container and spills. All right, a funnel is so that you can carefully, you know, so that you can carefully pour a certain amount of the substance. So funnels allow for carefully pouring substances, okay? And there's one other thing that funnels are good for is filtering. This is a coffee filter, but it can be used in a lab. So this, with all the holes in it, is actually specifically a filter funnel, okay? Um, there's actually a filter flask, I think I have somewhere over here. Here you are. This is a filter funnel. Um, the only thing is, I don't really have the right setup to use it right now. But, I'm sorry, not a filter funnel, filter flask. Funnel goes in the top. You attach a hose of water to go in there, and as the water goes in, it kind of forces some air to get pulled in through the top. And it kind of acts like a vacuum, and it helps to uh, filter things. So, funnels, which I didn't write. <laughs> Last piece of equipment, I'm getting lazy. Funnels. Funnels are for carefully pouring substances. All right, if you have a really big funnel, you could even pour solids through it. Uh, so liquids or solids. And you can also use funnels for filtering, okay? This is a filter funnel, but you could technically put filter paper 
into a regular funnel and pour a mixture through and stop any solid that's not dissolved from going through. Okay, there you go. So if you need to separate solids from liquids, a funnel is great. We do it in the kitchen all the time for coffee. Okay, all right. There you go. That's most of the equipment we'll be using. Uh, there's some other stuff and I'll introduce it to you. Like this guy, oh, this poor dude, didn't introduce it. Eh, it's not on your paper, so don't worry about it. This is a volumetric pipette. It's got lines on it and lets you carefully measure a certain amount of stuff you want to add, but it's not even on your lab paper, so don't worry about it. Maybe, maybe we'll use it at some point. Okay, next time I see you guys and girls, we'll go over uh, a little bit of safety uh, in depth, all right? Thank you, later.